Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. I had a little break here and I decided to do a video in my car like old times. I just wanted to talk about the film Terrifier 3. So um, the first one came out a number of years ago. I enjoyed it. It was low budget, a little more grounded, um, very violent and vulgar and stuff in terms of the gore and the kills. I liked it. The second one came out and I thought it kind of went off the rails a bit. It got very um, mystical in ways, lots of you know good versus evil stuff going on, a little too long, and um, the focus on the good characters, I just didn't find them very interesting. I need to go back and give that one a rewatch. Admittedly, I think that I may have been a little harsh on it, but um, people do seem to think it is too long and kind of drawn out, and that's where I stood with the second one up until this point, and do until I rewatch the movie. Um, the other night, my buddy Brian, one of my best friends, writes to me and says, I have an extra ticket to Terrifier 3. I know it's probably too late because it's like 5 o'clock or 4.30. It's at 6.10. What are you doing? Normally with a kid and a wife and stuff, it, that's, you know, too close for comfort in regards to running out and doing something. But uh, I was able to do that. We didn't have anything going on. My wife said, just go. Have a good time. Got some candy, got some water, brought it with me in my pockets. And went off to Terrifier 3. Had a fun time with my friends. Made some new friends. My buddy brought some of his friends along that I haven't met. And um, overall, I liked the film. Just to give a brief rundown. The movie starts out very, very ugly. Very violent. With Art the Clown, who, if you don't know, is the titular vill villain of the film. Who just murders people kind of for fun. Um, there is an overarching story of him and, and where he's from, and I, I don't know if it's really so much why he does what he does, but um, I'll get to that a little bit. And he just murders this whole family, including the children. Very graphic, very gory. Having kids, what bothers me now is seeing kids get murdered in movies. Um, kind of like when you see an animal get murdered in a movie and you have a dog. So seeing the kids get murdered and you know cry for their lives and the parents get like blubbering fools, like, you know, pleading to not murder these children stuff like that sort of irks me a bit but everything in the movie is done very tongue-in-cheek in a way so art the clown goes through these scenes of you know killing people in a college uh, killing this family going to a mall and dressing like santa and killing the kids in the mall as they think he's santa claus not to get too you know spoilery here with this but everything is like he kind of like looks at the camera and makes a funny face and points or stuff like that. So even though it is really gory, it is really violent, and a lot of it could be a turnoff, it's done in a way that he's almost in on the joke. Like, hey, this is silly, um, over the top and gratuitous, but I know it's gratuitous. So you kind of have that little wink and nod going on. Um, I thought the story was better than two, um, more in depth than one. It still runs two hours. I think it could have been a touch shorter, but I understood why they made it two hours because in this film, they decide to focus on, again, the characters from the second film who are the good people and their fight against Art the Clown. Uh, the main character, whose name is escaping me, doesn't really matter. She's back and she is out of the mental institution that she was put in after the second film and she's trying to cope with the fact that you know, she went through this traumatic experience with her friends and her family being murdered. She's living with her aunt and her uncle, and she's trying to kind of become normal again and, and assimilate back into society, and she starts seeing things. And then her brother starts to get involved, and then other people in the college start to get involved, and some of them make it and some of them don't. And uh, again, very, very violent. Um, funny in a way with how over the top the violence is. Tom Savini of uh, makeup artistry fame has a brief cameo in the film. And by the end of the movie, it sets up for a fourth film. And again, it focuses on that good versus evil element, demon versus um, angel type of thing going on. And I thought it was good. I, did I like love it and think it was like some phenomenal film? No. But I thought it was a good horror movie. Again, not for the squeamish if you don't like that type of stuff. But I definitely think... Between the first film and this film, it's much more well-produced, a bigger budget. You can tell there's more behind it, and it's not so low-budget and cheesy in a way. Um, I enjoyed it. My friend Brian loves it. He, like, collected the cup and the figure, the Funko Pops and all that. I have a, 
an autograph, but that's about it. So uh, yeah, overall, I, I'd give it a, a thumbs up. It's not like a two thumbs up or my favorite of mine, but I enjoyed it and I had a great time at the movie theater. So um, besides the people next to me who were talking full blast, like normal conversation for about half hour of the film until I eventually became the old man that I'm becoming and turned around and said, you guys have been talking for like, since you sat down, can you can you please tone it down? And then they eventually got up, got popcorn, and then moved across the theater. Gladly, because they talked throughout the frigging first part of the film. And I was trying to, like, wait it out, but don't have full-blown conversations in a movie theater next to someone. It's, it's pretty fucking annoying. So, uh, either way, let me know, guys, if you've seen Terrifier 3 or if you're excited to see it. And if you did see it, what you think of it. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.